Hi guys, I'm Benta. Welcome to Academic Solution Center. Here we make the academic journey much easier by bridging the gap between you and your lecturer or trainer. We achieve this by various programs. And these programs today, we are still going on with our orientation program. And guess what, guys? We already have a guest. So without much further ado, let me give her the opportunity to introduce herself and make us even know the course we are still orienting as well. So can you start? Thank you so much. Uh, hi guys, my name is Mary Bisabe. I am a student at JQuart. I am currently doing my master's degree. I did a bachelor's degree in control and communication. Yeah. Wow. So Mary is going to take us through an orientation over the course of control. So Mary, mm -hmm. just an overview. What is this control as a course? So control and instrumentation is a branch of engineering. It uh, deals with the study of measurement and control of uh, process variables. Process variables in uh, industrial engineering systems or uh, machineries that are involved in processes or uh, machine uh, manufacturing in the, in the industry. So process variables are like temperature, pressure, humidity, or pH. Yeah. Wow. So that is generally what this course is. So you did an engineering course in yeah. short. Yeah. Wow, I'm gonna lay this like you. So just an, an overview again. Mm -hmm. Let us assume that there is a student somewhere, not even assuming, we are aware there are students somewhere that just did their form four and the results are out mm -hmm. and they are about to join their campuses. Mm -hmm. And as for now, they are choosing their courses. And now, I want you to help this student understand why they should choose control as a course instead of other courses. Okay, so um, as I said earlier, uh, a control and distribution expert is trained to deal with uh, industrial processes. Mm -hmm. He still is trained in managing industrial processes. Mm -hmm. And so, as we know, we are we are a technological world. Every other day, we are evolving into more industry industries coming up and uh, being more technological. Yeah, and uh, and and for me, being trained in knowing how to manage and to control the processes that takes place in the industry mm -hmm. is actually an advantage. Because that is what uh, control and instrumentation entails. Wow. So it's an advantage because you will be much more informed on the society that you are just growing yeah. into, which is technology. Mm -hmm. So let us say, for example, this student has already chosen this course, mm -hmm. and now they are, they are in the campus. Mm -hmm. Number one, what should they expect in class? How many units should they sit for in every year? So, of course, because it's an engineering course, you expect a lot of math, physics, and uh, engineering things, yeah. uh, technical. So, in first year, we have uh, 16 units, yeah. uh, eight, eight in the first semester and other eight in the second semester. Mm. You, a, a lot of them are common in first years. You realize that you, they, uh, you share a lot of units with other courses in the, in the same department yeah. because they just introduce you to a broader view of the course. In second year down to fourth year, you continue specializing in what uh, the course, the specific course entails. Mm -hmm. In second year, we have 15 units. In uh, third year, we have fourth, uh, 14 or 15 units. Mm -hmm. In fourth year, we have uh, 14 units. Wow, just still on, on the expectation of the course. Mm -hmm. There's something that is just coming in my mind. Mm -hmm. For example, now this student has just come from secondary school. I know the, you know the structure of secondary school. Yeah. And now they are coming into campus. Mm -hmm. And here they are finding lecturers. If it is a campus or if it is a college, they are finding trainers. Mm -hmm. What should be their expectation, their relationship with these lecturers? Mm -hmm. What can they, is it freely? They can, can they go and ask questions in the office, in the class? Can they engage themselves? What is the expectation? As from that of secondary school. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the only difference, uh, in a secondary school and in, in a campus is that they, they, of course, uh, um, no one is going to remind you that it's class time. The timetable is just set and you, 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 will cho you, you choose where, or whether you will go to class or not. But you have talked about the relationship between lecturers and students. For me, I think it is what you will choose. Yeah. Like, uh, in high school, you could go and ask questions to teachers. Even here, it's the same. You can ask questions uh, during the lectures. It also depends with the attitude of the lecturer. Some lecturers uh, don't want to engage with students uh, during the class time. Other lecturers are so involving. Do you have any questions and all that? So it is more of the attitude of the lecturer, but it is it is the same when it comes to, to the lecturers. It is the same. Wow. So it shows that the, the relationship still remains. They're still teachers and these people are students and they should have that mentality. Yeah. And now, 
or in the line with exams, because you have already sat for these exams, you're doing your master's. Mm -hmm. Another expected, another question that maybe someone will be asking us, mm -hmm. you know, in secondary school, we do a, a syllabus whereby something that you are taught in form one, you expect to do it in KCC. Mm -hmm. What is the structure of examination in campus? Oh, so uh, a lot of courses, like for example, let me maybe refer to a unit like quantum mechanics. Yeah. You will realize if you do quantum mechanics in maybe third year, first semester, yeah. you cannot. Uh, there is there are sixteen weeks. Mm. Uh, here in Jekwat, one semester has sixteen weeks. Yeah. So you cannot cover all the quantum mechanics in sixteen weeks. Yeah. So they they choose they choose uh, something that is called a course outline. What they will they will cover to choose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In quantum mechanics, what they will cover, yeah. and that is what they will test at yeah. the end of the semester. So yeah. after testing this one, do we forget quantum mechanics, or these notes will be useful in another semester? Okay. Uh, like for other units, you will have like quantum mechanics one, quantum mechanics two. Quantum, that one you will keep carrying the knowledge you were you had in the first quantum mechanics you did. Others, I, I feel like all the units are interconnected because the knowledge maybe you have in something like calculus, yeah. you will use it in something in, in, in any mechanics. You will the, the knowledge is interconnected. Uh, so just an highlight: these units are very important, yeah. all of them. Yeah. They, we are not just studying for the importance of exams, but we are studying because in the next session we might meet the same thing that yeah. we need to apply the new. So we need to understand what is being taught and sure. ensure that we get the content. Sure, sure. sure. Uh, I think that is so much informative, and it will help a student who is just starting a study mm -hmm. to understand that every unit is so important, and we must take them with all the importance and ensure that we understand and also you are allowed to go and confirm if yeah. you didn't understand something. It's just something, you can get it from you. Mm -hmm. What if I'm doing a course mm -hmm. or a unit mm -hmm. and the lecturer does not like to engage himself mm -hmm. with the students mm -hmm. and we are not understanding this thing as a student? Mm -hmm. What can I do? Uh, uh, right now, there are a lot of sources of information. Yeah. You can just uh, Google or go to YouTube and just look for a source that has a... Uh, a source that looks like it's credible, yeah. uh, that has references, especially on Google. You just look for things that have references so yeah. that you will know that they are credible. Wow. Yeah. So just, that is another way. I'm, I'm thinking if you can help us with other ways too, that someone can use to, to, to make their studies much easier. Mm -hmm. For example, let us say that YouTube or mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. What are other things? What are some strategies that someone can use to study? Uh, you can you can form group discussions. Uh -huh. they, they help a lot. Wow. They help me a lot mm. because you find that maybe you, the, the thing you understood in class is not the same thing that this other person understood. understood yeah. The thing you did not understood, understand, the other person uh, under, understood that point. Yeah. And also you can make use of the university university library. Yeah. There are a lot of books there. Yeah, yeah there is internet. You can you can search for books. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, yeah, apart from now asking the, 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 the lecturer's questions, you can also do that. Okay, in addition to that, I think also we can also try, the student can try to reach out another lecturer that is engaged. Because see, we have a number of lecturers that teach yeah. one course more than one. Yeah, 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 we have them. Mm. If you will know them, yeah. then you can do that. But yeah. there's something, you see, and uh, you see each lecturer yeah. has his or her course outline. He has the way he delivers the content. Yeah. At times, you can be taught uh, the same unit with two lecturers. You find that this class and this class, they have the same unit, but the notes are not the same. Because this lecturer uh, chose some, uh, chose some parts of the, of the, of the, of the whole course. Like, yeah. for example, quantum mechanics. Mm. This le lecturer chose like five units. This other lecturer chose so like different seven, five yeah. units. You know, yeah. your notes will not be the same. Yeah, and uh, it's good to maybe concentrate focus on, on the lecturer. Yeah. yeah, I think that is very clear. And just when you're still focused on the study and the class thing, I want us to understand. I want you to help us understand how many exams am I supposed to do in a semester? Okay. You do you do the same number of exams as the, the unit number. Uh -huh. Like if you have eight units, you sit for. Eight exams, but also they are cut one, cut two. Some lecturers will prefer cut three. Yeah. Then at the end of it, there is an exam. Yeah. They are also assignments. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they are the ones that constitute into your performance. Yeah, yeah. The, the assignments, the exams, and especially in, in engineering courses or science courses, they are uh, are going for the labs or the workshops. The reports, no, the reports also constitute your yeah, your results at the end of the semester. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
So there's, there's another conception that students have mm-hmm. that cuts is not that important. Mm-hmm. What can you say about that? Cuts are important. I mean, you need that one mark to get that A or that B or that cut of points from supplementaries, you know. Yeah. Because uh, here the exams um, constitute 70% of the exam. Yeah. The main exam yeah. constitutes 70% of, your, yeah. of the last yeah. grade. Yeah. Then the cards, assignments, and uh, reports are all combined to constitute thirty yeah. percent. So in realize they are important. Thirty percent is a lot. Yeah. Is a lot. Yeah. And sometimes they're the ones that say exams yeah. it's so hard and you did that so well, mm-hmm. you have a good job and you should get something. Yeah. Okay, just before we go towards the end of the conclusion, mm-hmm. I want you to help us understand because now we have helped this student understand mm-hmm. what you expect in class and if also in examination. Mm-hmm. Let us say number one, if this course does it have a uh, attachments mm-hmm. and if it has how many attachments and how can someone go about it okay so uh, attachments go for like three or four months yeah they are done uh, during the long holidays so yeah. we have a long holiday after first year after mm-hmm. second year and after third year mm-hmm. after, after first year mostly you are not advised to go for the thing because you, you know little about General, the course yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But as, after second year, it is advisable to go for an attachment, though not compulsory, yeah. uh, in, in, in the case of control and discrimination. Mm. But at the end of third year, mm. it is compulsory to go for an attachment. Yeah. I, I went for attachment also in second year. Yeah. I went to Kenya Power. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, uh, yes, after fourth year, of course, it's in, internship. Okay. So, these attachments, how many, you said one is compulsory, another yeah. one is optional, yeah. but internship is at the campus. Yeah. So, another question, after doing this control and the implementation as a course, mm-hmm. what next? Oh, what next? You can choose to get employed, yeah. you can choose to start your business, mm-hmm. you can choose to come back for master's with me. Yeah. So, um... In the case of being employed, uh, they are a lot of industry. You can actually be accommodated in any any industry, mm-hmm. any industry that uses uses machineries or engineering systems. Yeah. Uh, like for example, maybe the, the major one, maybe Coca Cola. Mm-hmm. You can also be uh, uh, assimilated in a, in a power generating companies like Kenjen or Kenya Power. Uh, yes. Okay. And or let us see. For example, that is now when getting employed. Mm-hmm. What if you choose to proceed in your master's? Mm-hmm. What is the procedure? Uh, to proceed for your master's, there are requirements. You need to have a first class or a second class upper. Mm-hmm. If you have, just in case you have a second class lower, mm-hmm. you have uh, to have two years of experience before you come back to your master's. Mm-hmm. Yes, they also look at your PCC grades. Mm-hmm. You have, uh, maybe you got your way to the, to the, to the, um, the campus. So they have to cross-check if you, you had the package point. So you have to attach your PCC certificate. Okay, so that is all? Yeah, that's all. So it, is it really reliable to get a scholarship for, for masters? masters? Uh, it depends on the institution if they offer the scholarships. Yeah. Yes, if they offer the scholarships, you, you, can, you can apply. You can apply. Yeah. So the, the lack lies on the side. Yeah. Okay, so just as we conclude, mm-hmm. just, I want you just to look at the camera mm-hmm. and advise the student mm-hmm. and wish them well even as they continue their time. Oh, yeah. So uh, I wish you well, I, just in case you're doing control and instrumentation. Uh, all the best and, and have an open, uh, uh, an open mind because... Um, You'll realize maybe they will not offer uh, according to your expectations, but you'll have to, to, to work your way. If you wanted to have those skills concerning control and instrumentation, you can learn from anywhere, learn from YouTube, learn from anyone that you know that is a control engineer out there. Just have an open mind and uh, yes, all the best. Wow. Thank you so much, guys. That was Mary Bisabe. And I believe the information she has given you is very important to make you understand the journey that you're just about to take and will propel you to the rest of the four years. Thank you so much for even tuning in. We love you so much as Academic Center Solution. Bye-bye.